All right, guys, this is part two in a two-part series where we invited an Amazon expert from Amazon itself to show us all the ins and outs of Product Opportunity Explorer, brand analytics, and much more. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Did you know that Amazon sometimes loses or damages some of your inventory? Usually they reimburse you for this, but sometimes they might miss things. That's where Refund Genie comes in. What Helium 10's Refund Genie does is we go check out your reports and see if Amazon owes you any money. And then we give you the reports that you need to submit to Amazon so that you can get your money back. If you haven't run this, you could have hundreds, if not thousands of dollars that Amazon might owe you, especially if you've never used this before and you sell a lot on Amazon. So to find out more information, go to h10.me forward slash refund genie. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers podcast by Helium 10. I'm your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that's a completely BS free, unscripted and unrehearsed organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-commerce world. And today we uh, have invited Yi back onto the show. The second half of the episode, I couldn't cut it off because there's just too much amazing stuff that we're going over. So let's go ahead and get you the second part of this interview. And let's learn all there is to know about uh, Product Opportunity Explorer, Brand Analytics, Customer Loyalty Dashboard. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of cool stuff. Here we go. What else? So what else we have okay. here? Okay, I'll just move on to to the other tabs because each tab will have like different interesting insights for us to know. So this one. Speaking of insights, yeah. I just clicked on insights. <laughs> That's right. So over here, you'll be able to know. Wow, I mean, you'll be able to see like the different matrix. For instance, how many percent of the products are using sponsored product? Top five products. How many click share are they taking up? At one glance, you're, you're a good sales a saleswoman, by the way. <laughs> really, <laughs> kind of like me. She's like, she does this every day, but she's like, wow, like, look, like, like this is like, uh, this never ceases to amaze me. Like, this is so amazing. That's like you're like me and Helium Ten. Like, look, look at this Helium Ten thing, guys. Wow, yeah. like, oh my goodness, like I'm speechless. <laughs> I'm just yeah, playing yeah. with you, but yeah, I, I love it. I love the I love the genuineness. But this this is a wow thing because this is yeah. I, I'm seeing here. The ninety percent of click, like how many uh, percent of people are using sponsored products? Yeah. How many percent is Prime? You know, and it's like a hundred percent, right? Correct. But then imagine if you guys found a niche where it's like fifty percent. Wow, only that are would using be Prime. Major, you know? Wow, <laughs> that would be a real wow right there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the reason why I said wow is because I saw that the percentage of products using sponsored products is above ninety percent, which is pretty high compared to many other niche I've done research over. Usually, I think the average I've seen so far is between 80 to 90%. This is like 90 to 98%. So it's pretty yeah, high. I would yeah. say it's really competitive, which is why I guess when you see in the search term tab earlier on, the search conversion rate is so low because I yeah. think way too many people are running advertising on this. It might be a bit expensive. Yeah, correct, correct. This might it, cool. is a consideration point. Uh, I'm not sure if you can give this information, but what does it mean here when it says number of successful launches? Like, like what determines a uh, successful launch? I think actually, if you hover your mouse over the def uh, over the matrix, oh, it will actually see. tell you it means the number of new launches in the past ah, 180 wow. it days. Says it right there. Yeah, with annualized. It didn't say that amount. before. Like, I, I yeah. was like in the dark. This is like six months ago <laughs> since I've looked at this. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> yes. Number of new launches yeah. with an annualized revenue amount of over $50,000 in the past 30 days. All right. Yes. Cool. I think we are just being more transparent, especially because many sellers are like telling us they don't really understand this matrix. Uh, can you explain yeah. this better? Which is why this product opportunity explorer, I think throughout the entire year, I've seen so much changes. And in fact, it's for the better. Yeah. All right, All right. Cool. So um, I see this, by the way, for the people not watching this, I see there's columns for today, columns for 90 days ago, 360 days ago. Oh my goodness. The, the one thing that tells me to stay far, far away, not stay far away from this niche, but average selling partner age, almost 10 years. So like these are like experienced sellers mm. in this niche. And if you're a brand new seller, you know, you might not want to go against people with 10 years of selling under their belt. So there's another piece of interesting information here. Pretty cool. All right. Next yeah. one um, here is, one. or is there anything else on this page uh, before no, I go I to the next uh, tab? Trends. Trends. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, I think what helps over in the trends page, firstly, is to identify the seasonality of the product and also when you should enter to sell. So firstly, for this product, as you know, shower curtains typically is something usually people will buy across the year, right? There shouldn't be much mm-hmm. picks. But from what I see over here, I think there's a pick in July. Probably it's because of Prime Day. Prime Day? Yeah, probably yep. it's because of, because of Prime Day. Otherwise, it's quite flat throughout. So I think regardless of where you when you launch, I think it's fine. But just take note, maybe when you do your inventory planning or when you try to, um, you know, uh, purchase your product from manufacturer, um, maybe before Prime Day, you might want to manufacture more, right? So it yeah. helps you to do your inventory planning for that. Also, I'm just yeah. looking at this and the number of products goes down. So that could mean one of two things. It mm-hmm. could mean that more products are going out of stock. Like maybe this pe- people in this niche are not keeping their product in stock come Christmas time and they're running out or like the stronger listings are, doing are getting more powerful because th- now it takes less products to make up the 90%. But either way, there's a clear trend here where from September, where it was about uh, you know 90 products that make up this niche. And then now in uh, November and December, it's down to 65. So that's a pretty significant uh, drop there. Pr- pretty cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. There are also many other metrics that you can just toggle into to just quickly see uh, like how's this niche doing. For instance, uh, you can also look at the search conversion rate. Um, but I just mm-hmm. quickly see and I it's pretty stagnant throughout. In fact, I think yeah. it seems like it's increasing towards like slightly. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even know that. I, I could hit this button and it shows <laughs> yeah. me the, uh, Correct. it shows Correct. me the, the, the graph is, man, there's so much new stuff in here. I mean, I, I, I swear I looked at this like a few <laughs> months ago and I, I didn't know I could do all this stuff. Pretty cool. Yes. Yes. So you can actually see the search conversion rate seems to be uh, increasing slightly, but yet the product mm-hmm. count is decreasing. Maybe it's because like uh, more products are stopping to sell or is going out of stock, like you mentioned. Uh, so the remaining products are actually doing much better in terms of like uh, search conversion. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, the next one would be purchase drivers. This is yep. actually something new and I noticed that not many sellers have access to this beta page. So for you that you are able to see this, Ooh, I'm special. Yeah, you're special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So over here, it's something new that I think it got released in October. So it's really, really very recent. It'll tell you okay. um, what are the different features they are leading to uh, a successful sale or like a purchase by customer, right? So what are the mm-hmm. important features, I would say, in this case? Then you, you could see the color white or it has to have curtain hook or the theme is boho, typically are the top three positive feature for this shower curtain. So maybe it's something you need to take note of when you come up with different variations for your shower curtain when you want to start selling it. I'm going to read the little tool tip here where it explains what does ah, positive yes. drivers mean. It says here, cause I didn't, I, I was like, well, what the heck am I looking at here? It says features specific to this niche that positively impact the number of units sold by products within it. The impact is calculated by comparing the estimated sales of the products with that feature against the average unit sold by all products in the niche. Okay, and then I'm assuming negative just means the, <laughs> the opposite. Yeah, means the opposite yeah. uh, here. Okay, Correct. interesting. So this means people do do not like the stripe <laughs> pattern. Exactly. Okay, and they don't like that fabric, yeah. <laughs> that fabric one because For it's not reason. waterproof. I guess. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So let's say if you can come out with something water resistant, maybe you have a chance, and maybe your advertising uh, may not have to be that expensive if there are not much similar selections that are water resistant. Anything else on this page or can I go to the next one? The next one. All right. Customer review insights. So this is, uh, you know, we looked at the review insights based on like an ASIN. This is kind of just like based on the, um, the, all the products in the, in the niche, right? Correct. Correct. And I also briefly talk about it for like the particular ASIN just now, just that what you see over here is on the niche level. So, you know, at the aggregated level for shower curtains, what are typical things that are wanted or not wanted by customers? And this is something I would say for you to work on, especially on the negative reviews, for you to innovate your product in order to differentiate from existing uh, products that are currently selling. 
right? For instance, you see there might be a seller selling the shower curtain, a cloth shower curtain since 2014. But let's say if you are able to come out with a water resistant uh, curtain, which people like, you can even like uh, win over some of the click share. Yeah, so water resistance one, I'm looking here and I, I clicked on the negative and I see a lot of people have issue with the magnet. Um, the magnet is not strong. Uh, yeah. I know exactly what they're talking about. I bought one of these shower curtains. <laughs> now, I don't know if it's this one, but but it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't uh, It doesn't work very, very good. I, maybe I'm part of this percentage in this niche of oh. <laughs> <laughs> these negative mentions here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think people also talk about the thickness of the product. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's something very immediate. In fact, the mentions of thickness is 18%, which is significantly higher compared to the other topics like magnetic strength. Because yep. magnetic strength, even though it's second, is only 5%. So, in fact, something that you immediately need to work on would be the thickness of the shower curtain. Yep, I see that right here. Yeah. Okay, Correct. and then right. here at the bottom, um, it says topic impact on the star rating so yeah the thickness is the number one like everything else is that like two or point zero point zero two but the the thickness at zero point two yeah. so so like 10 times as as much so that's a easy way to see what people are complaining about correct correct so i i mean looking at the product itself even though we see like the product might be quite competitive instead in in terms of like the sponsored products percentage in terms of search conversion but actually there might still be opportunities because people are quite strong about the negative uh, review they are talking about that means there are products on amazon.com they are not able to satisfy people that are complaining about existing products within this niche so in this case if you are able to come up with something different position yourself differently there might still be opportunities for you to go in yeah even though there are multiple ASINs available already yeah all right we're ready to go to the next tab Correct. yeah the returns <laughs> Let's see. Oh, return. This is another one of the new ones because yes. it says beta here. Correct, okay. correct. This is something new. I think it was announced in Amazon Accelerate this year, which I think you're quite lucky. Do you see my shirt I'm wearing well. uh, today? Look, I oh, bet you don't even have this, have this sweater it. here. I've, I don't have it. I was a speaker at Amazon Accelerate, so I, I, I feel special. I got to have an Amazon Accelerate sweater. That's why I wore it. Uh, yeah, today it's nice. Here. It's nice. All right. So I'm looking at this. It's my literally my first time um, looking at this because I haven't looked at this. And I see, you know, I see a lot of the same data points here as far as search volume and, and things like that at the very top. But if I scroll down here under product returns insights, it gives me the uh, percentage of mentions of certain things. Like the number one thing was the display mm -hmm. colors. The, there's that thickness right there. Eight <laughs> percent. The material, yeah. the value for money. So um so yeah, that's interesting how people were giving bad reviews for the thickness the most, but as far as why they returned it, it looks like they didn't like the colors. They, they feel like um, it wasn't accurate, right? I think they mentioned the uh -huh. green didn't look like what it was as advertised, right? So the product listing images also plays a very important part in this as well as part of the returns which is why we always emphasize on coming out with a good listing as accurate as possible, give sellers or customers, in fact, even more information uh, to help them make decision on whether they want this product and help them understand this product so that you'll reduce like uh, possibility of returns. So yeah, in this yeah. case, display Ooh. color is really like a huge issue. All right. So Tons of new stuff here in Product Opportunity Explorer. Now, one thing I kind of referenced was, you know, there are some familiar data points with like the top click and stuff that like we might have been used to from years ago in, in brand analytics, but it is a little bit different brand analytics. So then how would a seller use uh, Product Opportunity Explorer with uh, Amazon brand analytics? Yeah, I would say it's more of um, how do you use brand analytics to gather like some initial insights of what you should sell, then Opportunity Explorer is always a tool for you to look more in depth into see, you know, and see how can you further validate the product selection. So I think that's, uh, I would probably share like a few useful cases of how uh, people can use brand analytics in order to shortlist a couple of ideas from there. Uh, but just something to note, brand analytics is only available for sellers enrolled into brand registry. So beyond just professional selling account, they need to have an eligible, eligible trademark that's enrolled into brand registry to access brand analytics. 
Cool. Yeah. So, so product opportunity explorer guys, remember it's available for everybody, but, uh, brand analytics is only available to brand registered, uh, sellers. So hopefully most of you guys are brand registered. And if so, go ahead, go ahead and click over to, to brand analytics. And there's, there, there's a whole bunch of, uh, new stuff here. Are we, are we going to talk about the C O oh, CLA? This is this, this is the CLA. As soon as I get in brand analytics, it goes directly to the CLA customer correct. loyalty analytics. Correct, oh correct. my goodness. Look at all of this new stuff here. Yes. Yes. This is something that I wanted to introduce actually, because it's something that is pretty new. Also, I think introduced around in October. So over here, uh, you'll be able to understand what are like uh, the demographics of the people that are buying your products, right? Then from here, actually, what we'll recommend for sellers to do is to tie it up with brand-tailored promotions in order to run specific discounts or promotions that will be able to help you to retarget a particular segment that you want to grow further. Yeah. Have you tried using brand-tailored promotions yourself? Well? Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. you know, like uh, I've done um, in some of my accounts the, you know, the, the abandoned cart and, and some other uh, different markets here where, uh, you know, I was able to get some sales that I probably wouldn't have gotten, you know, uh, without that. Correct, correct. Now, this here is looking at uh, one of my, you know, I'm seeing my coffin shelf brand here. I see it. I have an option of weekly, monthly, quarterly, uh, yearly. Um, and wow, they're... they're hibernating customers <laughs> what's a hibernating customer mean? uh basically people They're who sleeping. haven't like i guess purchased in a long while so which, yeah. which is why it's very important for you to look into this analytics before you actually do your mm -hmm. brand tailored promotions because when brand tailored promotions first launch sellers always ask us which segment should i target they don't really know right but over here after looking at our analytics you'll be able to know which segment do you have the most uh, customers in so that you'll be able to retarget them or reactivate that particular segment. For instance, your hibernating customers is 600 plus. Maybe you might want to run a promotion yeah. that targets sellers that or customers that haven't been purchasing your product for a while. Maybe you want to do something special. And there's for a them. button right here that I can do that on the right side. <laughs> I'm assuming this, this kind of ties correct. directly to the brand tailored yeah, promotions, yeah. right? This create promotion yeah. button. Okay. Correct, cool. correct. In fact, over here, if you go to the top left corner, there is a mm -hmm. button where you can click into the segment view. So the, the thing about customer loyalty analytics, ideally it's for uh, sellers that have been selling on Amazon for uh, at least a year, I would say, so that there will be sufficient data for you to make decisions on. Of course, you need to have enough customers for you to retarget, right? Uh, in this case over here, under the segment view, you'll be able to see a few matrix, including predictive customer lifetime value right so usually if there are sufficient data it will roughly tell you um what is customer spending this year and what they are predicted to sell uh to buy uh, next year as well for like your top tier customer so this is what's very important for you to know so that maybe you'll be able to um kind of like retarget them either through promotions or actively through the posts that you have in order to engage with them yeah yeah, I see my repeat customers. Oh, average repeat purchase interval. Very interesting All stuff. Right. Here. If multiple people like are right. like purchasing from you, if you are selling like commodities, you can, maybe you can consider doing subscribe and save, for instance. So it really depends on what segment you have so that you'll be able to leverage on like the different programs or different promotions that you have in order to retarget this group of customers. This wasn't even, was this even in your presentation in Singapore? Uh, no, it isn't. It's not, <laughs> yeah, because because this wasn't even out correct, uh, correct, a couple correct. of months ago, correct. right? Okay, really, yeah, that's really what I thought. I was like, yeah. I know my memory is bad, but I didn't know it was that bad. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad uh, it's not that I forgot about it. All right, cool. Uh, anything more in the CLA here? Um, nothing much to highlight additionally here. Yeah, because after all, it's still a very new tool. I guess uh, at a very start for sellers when you review this dashboard is to see, is to understand more about the demographics of like customers that are purchasing, how valuable they are. If not, it's, there are some immediate actions that you can take, for instance, using brand tailored promotions in order to actively engage with them first. Yeah, I haven't done that in a few weeks. I might be. Uh, I might need to look at my numbers here and, and run run some more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me know how it works for you. 
All right. Well, what, what's the next? Uh, are we going to switch to? Yeah, we need to switch back to marketplace. Oh no, no, no. We, we will next? still what be in I? Amazon brand analytics, but just brand that analytics? I'll be talking about maybe three use cases on the different reports that you'll be able to use in order to shortlist the kind of products that you want to investigate further or explore further using OX. All right. So that's it for the customer loyalty analytics. What's next? What should I, what should I click on? Yes. You're, 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 uh, I'm the driver and, and you're the uh, navigator. You got to tell me where to go next. Okay, okay. Right now, we'll still stay in Amazon brand analytics, but the next thing okay. that you need to click on is the top search terms report. I think it's under the correct. Yep, correct I see it's yeah. under search analytics and go to top search terms. Correct. All right, excellent. So over right. here. Yep, this, this is the one that I, I, you I often use. <laughs> I loved like three years ago when this came out. This is the greatest thing in the history of the. Mankind, I think, yes, <laughs> before, yes, yes, yes. but this is cool. And, and now it's like kind of crazy because it's like the oldest thing now. Now everybody's talking about the OX and SQP, but still, I think this has some still uh, valuable. definitely has some value. <laughs> yes, yeah? yes. So over here, what I think is actually useful is let's say if you don't really know, um, you know, what kind of products that you want to sell, but then, or maybe you already have like an idea of like the keywords of like, the item that you want to sell, um, maybe mm -hmm. to put it better in a better way. Let's say if you have a rough idea, yeah, if you have a rough idea of what you want to sell, but you are not sure how to validate the selection or what niche is it in, actually, right? So you'll be able okay. to use the top search term re report. Uh, I would say key in the keywords in the search bar over there. I'm gonna put coffin because yeah, that's my that's my coffin. main uh, my main thing here. Correct. And here we go. Okay. So over here, immediately you'll be able to see what are like, for instance, the top click brand and top ASINs over here. So immediately you'll be able to know what are the similar ASINs you can benchmark yourself against, right? But how do you work backwards in order to find out what are the niche for this product in order to do more research? Because after all, within this analytics report, the... Uh, data available is still limited to a certain extent. So mm -hmm. what I would advise sellers to do over here is to copy the ASIN. For instance, we can take the top ASIN. Um, take this yeah. coffin shelf. We can copy that okay. ASIN. We can put it back into Opportunity Explorer and search for this product. Okay. Correct. So over here, um, you'll be able to see your target ASIN. So likewise, like what we have did uh, previously, you'll be able to see like customer review insights, what are, like the click counts, etc. for this ASIN. But I think what's more interesting would be if you can go to the previous page. Okay. You can click into niche view, which is beside ASIN view. Can you see at the left side? You'll be able oh, okay. to see which niche this product is situated in. And in fact, for some ASINs, sometimes it might be present in multiple niche. So over there, you'll be able to work, go backwards then after that to do your research for, on the niche level. Yep. Yeah. I see it right here. All right. So for those just listening and you haven't seen what I was in, I took the ASIN, put it back to Product Opportunity Explorer, um, and then looked into the ASIN view and also the niche view. Now you've been showing me stuff this whole time. Let me show you something you've never seen, but that we just launched in Helium 10. This, this, this you might think is pretty cool. So we took brand analytics now, um, cause this is available in the API. And now we have this kind of like database here uh, inside of black box. And again, just like with brand analytics, you can only get this, you know, Helium 10 is checking your account if you have brand registry. And if you don't have brand registry, we can't show you this information because we always play by Amazon's rules and which is a, a reasonable rule. So let me show you something I literally found today. This was my first time. I think I actually did a video on this and it was a product that I couldn't believe existed. But what I did, uh, let me see if I can remember. I think I did the same thing where I typed in coffin here and then I was like, all right, show me a keyword that has, and now it's, you see, the cool thing about this is taking like Helium 10 data at the same time as, as Amazon data. Um, so I was like, hey, show me something that has at least, uh, I think I said 500 search volume, where at least uh, two items had greater than 30%. Uh, click share. You see, like, wow. like this is something you can't, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you could download this, of course, in, in brand analytics. I'm not doing anything new other than the search volume. This is all stuff that anybody can just download, but I'm just doing it right here in this dashboard. 
And then let me, I'm not sure if this is the exact thing I typed. Let's just take a look. I'll know when it comes up and I hit apply. There it is right here. Wow. Look at this. Coffee Coffin cat tree. Cat tree. <laughs> and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. What the heck is this? 3,200 search volume. I, you know, I thought I knew everything about coffins, right? And then, so I actually click this yeah. again. This, I got this from brand analytics. And then you, I know you guys are, are, a lot of you guys can't see what I'm looking at. This is insane guys. There is these cat trees. Uh, oh, and wow. the one that is out of stock, it's out of stock already. There is one that's $140 and it sold like 800 units or something. Here's one that sold 100 and it's uh, $140. It's crazy. People are buying cat shaped trees. Uh, let me see if, if that product is still here. That was number one. Where is it? Is it this one? Here it is right here. Th this is the number one selling one. This is cool guys. Uh, I, it doesn't show up in Amazon search anymore. That's why it didn't come up, but because it's in brand analytics, which is another good thing about brand analytics, by the way, I bet you I could find this right here. And what we just did, let me coffin cat. There it is right here. So you see, I would have found this even if I was in brand analytics, there it is coffin cat tree, but it takes me right to this number one click one, which is now out of stock because it was, it was, it was being bought too much. Um, people were selling this for a ridiculous amount of money and they sold almost 1000 units of this, but I discovered a completely new niche thanks to brand analytics and, and this new helium 10 tool that, that incorporates uh, brand analytics. So, so yeah, guys, brand analytics is still very valuable. You can get some really cool, um, ideas. Do you, do you have any pets, cats Me? or dogs or anything? I don't have a yeah. dog or cat, but I do, my boyfriend do have a Pomeranian. Okay. Now would he... Would he make a coffin shaped bed? Like, isn't that kind of morbid? Like, like, why would you do that for your pet? Like, I don't understand pet owners, but guess what guys, there's 1000 people a month who want a coffin shaped toy or, or a bed for their cat to sleep in. I worry about those people, but I'll <laughs> gladly take their $140. 140 uh, is a really, really good price point. <laughs> right? I'm quite sure yeah, the person's yeah. margin must be great. Considering, I mean, there are many <laughs> other sellers selling at much cheaper price, but people still buy the $140. There must yep, be something yep, great exactly. about it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, it's great, it's great. But my boyfriend's uh, dog just uh, lies on a towel. That's all. We wanted to buy a bit, but it doesn't matter. Uh, that's it. normal. <laughs> See, that's normal. <laughs> Putting it in a coffin shaped towel. That's not normal. Oh yeah. Um, okay. Anyways, anyways, anyways. so, so uh, I, I was, yeah. uh, we were, we were in, let me go back to where we were. We were looking at the search terms. You were talking about the, Correct. the cool use of this, anything left on this search term page or uh, should I go somewhere else? Now we'll move on to the next one, which is under the, uh, brand analytics as well. It's the consumer behavior analytics. Yeah. Okay. Do I just click it or do I click one of these click three the sub options here? Size analysis. Market MBA. Yes. So, so that, correct, you know, correct. that normally stands for like a master of business, <laughs> something or other, like, yeah, like a, yeah, a degree yeah. that I don't have, but here it means market basket analysis. Correct, okay. Correct. What's useful. And here's all my products. It's my it's project X products right here. Yeah, I can see yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So I, yep. I think what's useful about this page is let's say if you already have an existing product that's already selling, right? You're wondering what kind of product can you extend to sell? What kind of new selections can you introduce? So right over here, you'll be able to see what are people commonly, uh, buying together with your products. And if this is actually something that is relevant, it might be something yep. you want to consider selling as well. Let's say if you want to brand mm -hmm. yourself as like a coffin shelf or coffin team seller, maybe you can expand to sell even like those brush holders, etc. Right? Yep, a skull shape. Yeah. Uh, for those who can't see this, uh, <laughs> we, I just clicked in the very first one and 4% and of people are buying uh, it with a skull makeup brush right. uh, holder. It, it must be like the person that's buying your coffin bookshelf, just like like the coffin team yep. kind of like products. You know, there are people yeah. who have like their whole house filled with Hello Kitty. So I'm not surprised <laughs> there's someone yeah. who likes everything coffin yep. related. Yep. So maybe this is something uh -huh. or like sense. the brand that brand positioning you want to go into or like the team you want to get started with. So you do not need to sell like, you know, different kind of uh, shelves. In fact, you can just go stick to coffin team products. Yeah. That's something that yeah, you, yeah. you can consider as well. So that's one okay, way. Cool. Then the last way that I would like to just quickly mm -hmm. introduce would be under 
the consumer behavior analytics as well under demographics. Okay. So over here, you'll be able to know at one glance who are actually purchasing your products. Like, you know, the gender, income, education, the age of the people buying your products. So the way that you want to introduce new product or like the type of product that you want to introduce to like the uh, this customer segment that you have, uh, it can be fully customized. There are three people who make $250,000 a year who is buying the coffin shelves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So it's not just for uh, for cheap people. This for is for the, uh, the high, high class, class too. They are, have high class kids. <laughs> are buying yeah, coffin yeah, shelves. Exactly, exactly. So if you scroll to the left side, for instance, let me take a look at what is the age demographic. Oh, it's quite well spread out throughout like 20s to 40s. Mm -hmm. so yeah, that's actually surprising. Yeah, maybe I'll consider them maybe the office crowd. So you may want to launch something that um, is favorable for them. Maybe, you know, it can be like the coffin uh, pen holder, which can also be used mm -hmm. for the, like, the brushes, right? Maybe you can position it as like a pen holder, something like that. So we need to understand uh, who are actually buying your products so that you'll be able to launch products that suit them. Right. So this just yeah. roughly gives you an idea uh, to help you, you know, have like initial sparks or something to get started with initially. Yeah. So it's at the ideation cool. stage. Yeah. So I think just for the purpose of like uh, product research, I think these are the three common ones that you can start using first. Then maybe next time I can share more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, this is this is like yeah. way more than I, I have been using Lately, I just use kind of like the traditional stuff, but now this shows me that I definitely need to be in here uh, a little bit more looking lo looking at stuff. All right, so wow, this was a lot of information. Now, pretty much everything that we went over today is available in those marketplaces, and even more, actually, the the OX uh, is available in those six seven marketplaces that uh, she mentioned earlier. You know, Europe, USA, um, Japan. Uh, brand analytics is actually available. A lot of this stuff in 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 almost all of the marketplaces, um, but also you know like uh, he works here in the Amazon Singapore, and, and you do some like you know if if anybody's in your region, you actually have some cool programs. But first of all, let's talk about what is your region. It's not just Singapore, like right, like like what what countries are you servicing yeah. the sellers correct, in? Correct, correct. So we are actually covering Southeast Asian sellers. Um, they are from Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, and Cambodia. So any sellers that are coming from this country, actually we do provide um, free account management support to help them on board and start selling on Amazon.com. So I, I think many of the sellers uh, may not know that we exist, but I just want to share that we are here. Beyond just the account management support, we do have many other educational resources available. For instance, Seller University, live broadcast webinar so you can watch it anytime. We do have our monthly seller meetup and events every, yeah, every month um, but this is only currently more for Singapore sellers. So if you are a Singapore listener, please drop by for our event and uh, do let me know if you want to attend the event or do not know where is the registration page, let me know. We'll let you in. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we do have many other pages like our Telegram community groups as well as Facebook uh, pages as well where we do share some practical tips from other existing seller on how to sell better. Yeah, and also we do share updates on like new products or any policy updates, etc. So just stay tuned. We do actually have a lot of different uh, pages available or have support that we can provide to Southeast Asian seller. So do uh, reach out to us. If you are a new seller within this region, we'll be able to help you. And, and then how can people do that? How can people reach out? Like where should, what website should they go? They can either go to sell.amazon.com.sg uh, to reach out to us either through by attending our live webinar or signing up for our seller events. Alternatively, they can also hit us up via our Facebook page, which is our Global Selling Southeast Asia uh, Facebook group. So they, they can also uh, reach out to the marketing team from there. Then they'll reach uh, the seller with account managers like us. Then we'll be able to follow up accordingly to help them launch. Yeah. And by the way, guys, if anybody has doesn't have Helium 10, actually Amazon Singapore 
has special discounts that we don't give to anybody else because they help, uh, you know, th they help new sellers, you know, come and join. So like, if you want a discount, like actually, uh, uh, he can give you one that's probably better than the discount that I can wow. give. So that's at Amazon. So make sure to, to go through Amazon Singapore guys. They, they got the, they've got the uh, hookups. And now I was talking to Anna in, in China last week when I was in, in, in China and she's arranging the potential Philippines oh, yes. Amazon conference. <laughs> yes. So I'll be hopefully going there in maybe March. Um, there might be a smaller one in February, but I'm going to probably go to the March. Any chance that you can go that you can, sh should, should I put in a good <laughs> word to Anna? Or like make sure, hey, we need uh, you over there talking about this kind of stuff. Maybe, maybe for the March one, you might see me there. Then I'll bring you around for good food. I do know some nice places. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, that's, uh, hey, I'm, um... I've only been to Philippines like four times, but I am half Filipino oh. and I need to, I need to connect more to my, my roots, but, uh, I have a team out there. I'm definitely going to be trying to go in, in the middle of March, whenever this conference is. So look out for more information on there. Well, uh, you thank you so much for joining us. And this has been an amazing year, I think for Amazon and for brand analytics, for search career performance, for product opportunity explorer. Well, it was great to have you on here. Uh, I took, uh, you know, I didn't realize it was going to last two episodes, but there was just too much good stuff um, here. So thank you so much. And then maybe, you know, next year uh, or in 2025, we'll definitely want to bring you back because probably by then there'll be so much new stuff that have been released that we'll need uh, you to uh, talk to us about it. And then until then, maybe we'll see you in Philippines or, or maybe next year some, uh, in Singapore. Yeah, hope to see you again with to bring you more good stuff so that we can share with all your listeners uh, next time around. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.